Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friend, don't forget to subscribe, say that you like the video, and also press the bell so that you get notifications every time I make a new video. If you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea, or Tucker and Leo stories, you can now get exclusive stories on my Patreon account. Go to the links below the video and you can join Heidi Cherry and Vea Club or the Tucker and Leo Club and get exclusive stories with your names in them. I love you all so much. Enjoy the story. Bye, friend. Are you ready? To meditate with Kari. Try and stay as still as you can in your bed so that you can relax your body and let go of your busy, busy day. After the fun on the ice, the cats playing ice bowling with Tucker and Leo. Mr. Kitty really enjoyed his ice skating with Vea. It had been a couple of weeks and it was almost Christmas. He wanted to do something really nice and special for Vea for Christmas. He decided he was going to let Vea know how much he cared about her. It had been a long time now that Mr. Kitty had been having feelings for Vea. Feelings he couldn't explain. All he knew was he liked her, and every time he was around her, he had butterflies in his tummy. And also, he knew he liked her because he always acted like he didn't like her. He was pretending that he was super cool and he wasn't really caring at all about what she thought or what she did. But secretly inside, Mr. Kitty was constantly watching Vea. He watched everything that she did. He liked her princess dresses. He liked how she talked. He liked her moods. He thought she was kind and sweet and thoughtful. He liked her little giggle that she had. He liked everything about her. The problem was, he had to let her know. He had to let her know because Mr. Kitty was moving out. Mr. Kitty's mum and dad had found a new house and they were no longer going to be staying at Tucker and Leo's house. It was time to move out. Mr. Kitty had been living with Tucker and Leo for almost a year, and even though he wasn't super friendly with either of the dogs, he had finally got used to Tucker a bit more. Leo, well, Leo just kept himself to himself, and Mr. Kitty was never really bothered by Leo. He thought he was a sweet old dog and that was about it. Tucker was a pain in the bum. But Tucker could be fun also. Mr. Kitty had called Vea's house and he'd asked if Vea wanted to go on a very special Christmas evening out. That's all he said. He was keeping it mysterious didn't tell her what they were going to do or anything. Vea said, Oh, yes, me thinks that sounds very nice. Um, what should I wear, though? I would need to know the dress code, of course. Mr. Kitty told her that she could dress all in white, but she had to wear a big, warm coat. Make sure to bring gloves and hat and maybe she could wear her white boots. Vea liked the sound of that. She always felt like a snow princess when she dressed like that. She had a big, white, furry 
jacket that she could wear that was super warm and insulated and a white beret hat that was mohair and it was all soft and fluffy with mohair white gloves and her white boots. She even had a mohair white scarf. It had been Wednesday when Mr Kitty called. Now it was Friday. That's the day that they were going out. Vea had been pacing and beside herself for two days. Cherry kept telling her to calm down. Oh, MG, anybody would think you were going out with, like, Prince William or something? He's not that special. It's just Mr Kitty, for goodness sake. Chill out, woman, chill out. Heidi said, Oh, it's about time, when Vea told her about the phone call. You've only actually been in love with Mr Kitty for about six months now and never said anything. Vea said, Me is not in love with Mr. Kitty. Me just thinks he's very nice. Anyway, love is a very, very complicated thing, Heidi, and I don't think I'm quite ready for love. Heidi said, I'm just joking. But I do know you really like him. Vea blushed. Yes, I do. He's so good at everything. And he's smart, and I don't know. I just feel like I've known him in another life or something. Mr. Kitty was picking Vera up at 7pm on the dot. She'd been ready since five. She reapplied her lip gloss at least 20 times. It was apple flavour. Tasted yummy. He finally rang the doorbell. Heidi, Cherry and Vea were all stood behind the door. Cherry was killing herself laughing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Vea, I can't believe it. Oh, hi. When Vea actually opened the door, Cherry acted all cool. So, yes, all right, nice then. So you guys are going somewhere well. Hopefully you have a really nice time. You make sure you take care of my sister. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble, Miss Kitty. Vea stepped outside into the cold and closed the front door behind her. Cherry and Heidi's faces were squished against the window, watching everything that was happening. They were giggling, both of them. Vea walked down the path and then she stood still. What? No. No, she said. There were two reindeers, white reindeers, pulling a cart. You know, like a horse and cart where you can sit in the back and then the horses drive you around town. It was like that, but they were reindeers. Reindeers, guys! Bea almost peed herself. She was so excited. <gasps> oh my, Cherry is not going to believe this. How on earth did you get reindeers to come? Mr Kitty smiled. It's from when I lived on the streets. Before, before you know, before my mum found me and took me in and started taking care of me. Yeah, when I lived on the streets, things got pretty rough sometimes, but you met some really interesting cats and interesting people. And there was this one cat, he was called Billy. Billy, whew, he was quite a character. Billy had lived on the streets since he was a kitten, and he was really streetwise. He knew where all the free food was. He knew where all the warm places to sleep was. He just knew all sorts of stuff. He knew everyone in town. If you needed something, you found Billy and you asked him, Billy, I need a battery. Oh, yeah, sure. Billy would get you a battery. Billy, I need a new collar. Billy would get you a new collar. Billy, um, do you know anyone that drives a taxi? Billy would know who drives a taxi. Anyway, there's this one day, right? We were just about to cross the street where out of nowhere, this car 
zoomed really fast towards us and I pulled Billy back. Since that day, Billy says I saved his life and he owes me and and he's a really good friend. Anyway, if anyone knew how to get reindeers, it was Billy. So I called him and he happened to know a friend who knew another friend who was cousins with another friend of Santa. And Santa, did you know this, has a lot of reindeers, not just the well-known ones. He keeps and takes care of a lot of reindeers, and these are two of Santa's reindeers. Bea said, no. No. Oh my, no way. She walked up to the reindeer that was closest to her, and started to scratch underneath his chin. The reindeer liked it. He moved his head closer so that Vea could scratch some more. And then she walked around to the other reindeer and tickled him under the chin. He closed his eyes and his ears twitched. He lifted his chin up so she could get a better scratch. They really liked that. Yeah, said Mr Kitty. Anyway, come on, because we don't have them for very long. We've only got two hours, and then that's it. I have to take them back to Billy, because Billy has to take them to that friend who knows a friend who knows a cousin of Santa, so that he can take them back. Right, said Vea. Mr. Kitty held out one of his paws, and Vea put a paw on his paw, and they touched for a second. Vea got shivers down her spine. Little did Vea know, but Mr. Kitty was bursting like starbursts inside of his tummy, just as their paws touched. They both acted as if nothing had just happened, and Vea sat down in the cart, ready to be pulled by the reindeers. The cart was beautiful. It was painted white, and it was all lit up with fairy lights and they were twinkling. Mr. Kitty had even set up a speaker in the back and he was playing Christmas music. Oh, this is so nice. When he sat down next to her and he was all settled, he picked up a blanket off the floor and pulled the blanket over both of their legs and their tummies, all warm and snuggly. It even brought a flask of hot chocolate. Oh, wow, she said. This is perfect. This is really nice. Thank you so much. What made you want to do this? She asked as the reindeers trotted off and started to walk them around the block. Well, said Mr. Kitty, unfortunately I have some bad news. Oh, no, said Vea. Mr. Kitty said, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be moving away. Oh. Vea's heart stopped. Oh, she said. When did you find out? Just the other day. That's why I'm doing this. So that, you know, I can spend a bit more time with you before I have to leave. Oh, said Vea. When, when do you go? We leave in two weeks, just after Christmas. Oh, said Vea. She couldn't hide how upset and sad she was. Mr. Kitty tried to cheer her up. I was thinking, since like we're so good friends and all, that maybe we could be like pen pals. Oh, said Vea thinking about not being able to see Mr. Kitty whenever she wanted. How far are you going? Well, we're going to be about an hour away, so it's not too bad. I can still visit, but obviously I'll only be visiting when Mum comes to see her Mum, and I don't know how often that's going to be. That's why I thought we could be pen pals, because, like, you know. Vea said, Cause what? What do you mean, you know, like, you know? She was hinting for Mr. Kitty to tell her 
how he was feeling. Mr. Kitty gulped and swallowed hard. He was super nervous. But he was going to be brave. He said, Well, since you're someone that's very special to me. <gasps> Vaya's heart stopped. She couldn't believe it. He just told her that she was special to him. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to think. Oh, she said, biggest smile on her face. Well, you know, you're really special to me too, Mr. Kitty. <laughs> Mr. Kitty was doing a jig right there on the seat inside his body, not on the outside. On the outside, he was acting super cool. But on the inside, he was the happiest he'd ever been. Never in a million years did he think he would feel this way about someone. They both smiled at each other. I'm a very good pen pal, said Vaya. Maybe we can write to each other every week. I'd really like that. Mr. Kitty said, yes, yes, me too, definitely. We'll have to keep each other posted on what we're doing and what we're getting up to. Vaya said, yes, yes, that would be really nice. And then for a second she got sad again, thinking about him not being there with her. But they still had the evening. The reindeers were super cute. They trotted along for the longest time, and Vaya and Mr. Kitty talked and talked and talked. They were all nice and snugly and warm underneath their blanket with their hot chocolate. They were close to each other, close enough to be touching just a little bit. Vaya had the best time. She laughed at all of his jokes. And Mr. Kitty enjoyed every time she giggled. One day, maybe, they would be boyfriend or girlfriend. One day, maybe, they'd even be married. Vaya was daydreaming. She was thinking about what her wedding dress would look like. Oh, there's so many different choices, she thought to herself. Just a little bit distracted by her daydream. But little did she know, Mr. Kitty was daydreaming. He was daydreaming about the next time he'd be in town and how he would be able to hang out with her again and maybe go do something special just like this. At the end of the evening, it was time for the reindeers to go back to Billy's friend of a friend of a friend whose cousin knew Santa to take the reindeers back. Vaya and Mr. Kitty found out that the reindeers love hot chocolate because as soon as Mr. Kitty poured Vaya a cup of hot chocolate, the reindeers stopped really fast to a halt and they wouldn't move until they got a cup. Super cute. And then when they drunk their hot chocolate, they carried on trotting away, walking them round the block. Mr. Kitty helped Vaya down from the coach and walked her to the front door. He gave her a kiss on the paw and she blushed. A kiss on the paw was just enough for now. Maybe when she was older, she could have a real kiss, you never know. Vea, Mr. Kitty, Tucker, Leo, Heidi and Cherry hung out quite a few more times before Mr. Kitty left two weeks later. It was quite a sad day. Tucker was very upset. I just finally 
got to got to the point where I could kind of sniff on him and, and lick him a little bit and, and he didn't hit me in the face with his paws. And now he's leaving. I'm very, very, very sad about it. What am I going to do? Who am I going to chase? Vea and Mr Kitty would definitely write to each other. And the next time he's in town, they'll hang out again. And maybe Vea could go visit him. Who knows? We'll see. But until then, that's it for Mr Kitty for now. The end. Thank you.